Hi there, my name is Aaron Short and welcome to my YouTube channel. And today we're doing a new guitar unboxing. This is a Martin D18. I've not really had much experience with a D18 before and I really want to try a lighter Dreadnought guitar. And also there's several new pickups that I'm yet to try and demo on my channel. So I'll be using this guitar to demo them. Okay, so let's get straight to it. So this is from Sweetwater. I have bought a lot of gear from them in the past. And I have had some excellent and some not so excellent experiences in the past, but you know, this is 2019, it's a new year. I know they're rapidly expanding and changing all the time, growing all the time. Let's see how they've boxed this guitar and what the condition is. So let's use this as a new guitar day and also look at how Sweetwater ship their guitars. All right, here we go. So we have a huge box. A huge box. Now this arrived about an hour ago. If you receive a guitar in the winter and it's freezing cold and your apartment is boiling hot, it's best to wait before you open it. This is because you don't want the wood to be shocked by the temperature change. It could actually cause a crack in the guitar. Now I'm making this video in May, so it's not such a big issue. I would still suggest you wait for an expensive instrument and the more fragile the instrument, the longer I would wait. Some people say to wait 24 hours and if you're happy to do that, I would. But wait at least a few hours and make sure when you touch the box, it's not freezing cold because that means you're gonna go from one extreme to another. So this is what we receive, our receipt. I won't show you how much I spent. There's the receipt. There's your card saying, so you know, please do a, a new guitar day on the on the social media. Perhaps I'll do that. Here's a sticker. They give you a lot of free stuff, and a nice um, information card as well. Very good. I do like Sweetwater. They do have excellent service. I have had some issues with them, but they've always gone out of their way to make things right, and I really appreciate that. So we've got some padding here. Okay, now we have another box. So it's a box in a box. This is good, it means more protection from the damage and handling and also weather. But it makes it harder to open. Definitely helps if you have two people to do this. Whew. Okay, so now we have another box. This is the box from Martin themselves. Let's look at this box, it's very nice. I love the Martin boxes, I love the logo. As you know, I'm a fan, so I'm always gonna be a bit biased towards Martin guitars, but if I find a problem, I will let you know because I want to be honest with my videos. Okay, now we open this and there's more padding. Don't forget to recycle your boxes. Then we have the guitar with some, there is some bubble wrap. I have to say the guitar was moving around inside, which isn't ideal, but I appreciate the fact there's two boxes and it's in a hard case, so we should be fine. away. So far so good. Now what you want to do is inspect everything. Sweetwater say they inspect everything multiple times which is great but when you get something new make sure you've got no zippers on, make sure you've got no jewelry that will scratch and really get a bright room and really go over the instrument or whatever you're buying and make sure it's fine before you accept it. If there's any issues take a photo and send it straight to your salesperson. Now on the strings is this card. So it says, this certifies your new instrument has passed Sweetwater's 55 point inspection is ready to play. Thank you for your business. It's signed by the first inspector and the final inspector. Actually this final inspector is the head of customer service. Justin, I was speaking with him. So this should be good, right? The serial number is listed. 
It says you get two years of coverage. I mean, I can't fault another, another booklet. Maybe this is all bad for the environment, but on the other hand, great to know. They've even gone through a checklist here. Can you, I don't know if you can see that on the screen. So they've said, this is what they've checked. 55 point inspection. They let it um, acclimate for 24 hours, great. They inspect the case. They verify the contents, accessories. They inspect the polish, the fingerboard surface, the neck and neck joint, the strings, the plastic parts, the hardware, inlays, binding nut, headstock. They check for um, vibrations. They check the bridge, tuning machines, pick guard. There's others as well, which aren't applicable to this guitar because it's like electric guitar things like, um, like switches and, and potentiometers. Then you've got electronics testing. Again, no electronics on this guitar, so that's not been checked. Playability check. Intonation is checked. Neck relief is checked. Frets are checked. String and saddle position is checked. They tune it to pitch. They, they tune it to pitch. They polish it. They inspect and refresh the packaging. They store it in the, in the warehouse, and then they double box it for shipping. Okay, great. I mean, I can't fault any of that, but is that true? Well, let's see. One thing I have noticed, actually, Ah, I almost thought they'd forgotten their candy, the sweet water candy. Get it sweet, sweets. Make sure you shake that box so you won't get your candies. I probably won't eat these, but um, you know, it's a nice gesture. Okay, let's get to the guitar and see if everything they've said is true. Here's the moment of truth. Okay, I'm looking at it, a bit of dust there, I'll just wipe that off. The top is lovely, gorgeous, perfect. The sides are nice, this is mahogany back and sides. Look at that, it's gorgeous. And Sitka spruce top. Nice looking pick guard. On Sweetwater you can see the weight and also how the guitar looks. So you can choose an instrument that looks how you want. So I looked at the neck, made sure there wasn't any weird lines on that. I checked the headstock, I checked the tuners. These are Grovers, look fine. Let's give it a strum and see how it sounds. Okay. So, some of these strings are in tune and some are not. Um, I don't mind that it's not perfectly in tune out of the box. You would never expect the guitar to be when it's been through different weather, climates and things and shipping. But I do find it interesting that Sweetwater ship their guitars in tune. Because usually when you ship a guitar, you tune it down slightly. I mean, check this out. This is so close to tune, to pitch. They obviously shipped it in tune. It was almost there. But I find that weird. A lot of people say when you ship or sell a guitar, tune it down like, um, a half step or a whole step before you ship it as it reduces the tension on the on the body so when it's in shipping it will be less likely to get damaged i don't know sweetwater don't seem to agree with that so okay pretty good let's take a closer look So like I said, make sure you check all over, make sure you check here, there's no splits or cracks, make sure you check the bridge. You could slide a piece of paper here just to see if there's any gap between the, the bridge and the body. Check the sides for any damage. Check the neck, make sure there's no like markings from a, a capo or anything on the neck. There is a very, very slight mark finish. It's not a dent. It's like a finish mark on the neck. Dents are what bother me the most. Um, you do see this sometimes. I don't know if it's because they hang it up to take photos or if the factory caused this, but there is a, there is a mark. Now it's nothing that will bother me, but there is a slight mark. And if that was a dent, it would, it would be a real problem for me. I mean, guitars get dented and banged up. I know this is for gigging, but when I buy a brand new guitar, I want it to be brand new basically. Um, check the headstock. Now check the tuners. Make sure they don't rattle. Tap all over them. Yeah, these are Grovers. These are good. Have, should have no problem with these. Check your frets. Make sure there's no sharp edges. That seems fine. Give it a shake carefully. There's nothing rattling around inside. 
check your binding all around the edge. I mean, basically, get a torch and check the whole guitar for any kind of mark. I mean, if you find a, a, a nasty dent or scratch, you want to prove that it wasn't you that caused it. Now, once you've done that, go out and play. You know, don't obsess over instruments, but make sure what you buy is in good working order. Now, what I can say about this, if I look down at the strings, the strings are quite high from the fretboard. And it doesn't play that easily. Now, I, fi I find this to be the case with most acoustic guitars, or well, any guitar that's shipped. And with Martins, I found it's very simple to fix. And with any guitar, well, you've got to change the truss rod. What happens is they probably made this neck straight and very easy to play when they left the factory and when it left Sweetwater, I presume. Now, some people like the neck to have more relief. So when they strum really hard, it doesn't buzz. The cost that comes with is that you can't play, it's impossible to bend and play like that. And it's hard to press down. In fact, I just put out a tune doing that. Now, what I do, is I use a truss rod tool to straighten the neck. This is something a lot of people are scared of doing, but you really mustn't be because whenever a guitar is shipped, it's gonna, the neck is gonna move, everything's gonna move. That's probably why the, the strings went out of tune. The neck probably shifted, right? Which makes it much harder to play. Now, what I've noticed is a lot of companies still don't give you the correct tool like this to make the adjustments. Some do, and some have, to, have um, Trust rods that use standard tools, like a screwdriver or something, Taylor do that, which is great. But Martin do use this kind of, I'm almost gonna say proprietary tool, it's not. It's, it's, a, it's a regular tool, but you're not gonna have this in your toolbox. So this is a five millimeter tool. Now, I used to have one that was just the metal part, I couldn't barely use it. This one has this awesome handle, it's made by Cruise Tools. So it's the Cruise Tools 5mm, it's not expensive and it's really easy to use and you need to use it. I'm surprised they don't give you one of these in the box with such an expensive instrument, I have to say, because the thing is with this guitar, some people that are beginning and learning the guitar might play it and think, oh it sounds nice but it's kind of hard to play. I thought a Martin played easily, they use plec machines and all this and you know, meant to be easy to play all over the neck. Kind of tiring me out. You might take it for a setup and I'll show you what they might do if you take this for a setup. They might take this tool, feed it, make sure you don't touch the strings because you'll ruin them. Push it all the way in until it clicks, find where it clicks in place. And give it a nice turn. If you hear cracking, then stop. No. Again, if you're not sure what you're doing, don't do it. But in my experience, most people can do this like they can change their strings. You want to tune up again. Now I've straightened that neck. So what I'll find now is... It's just much easier to play. I feel it changes the tone as well. I feel like the tone is more, is brighter somehow. I, I kind of like it. Much better. Now I don't want Martin calling me and saying that people messed up their guitars. So make sure you have the right tool. Make sure you're very slow and careful. You don't touch the strings. You pull them apart. You go in there very carefully. Don't scratch anything. Wiggle it around till you find it bites in place and then very slowly turn it. If it starts getting hard to turn, then stop. It's not a bad thing, but it means you're getting towards the end of how much you can turn that. So you've got to be careful. If you're in any doubt, then do pay for a setup. You're looking at 50 to 150, depending where you live and depending what they have to do to have that done. And it is definitely worth it. If you live near the Martin factory, you can actually stop by and they'll do it for you. They're a great company. So I gave that quite a turn, right? If I hadn't, I might be questioning this guitar. I have to do that. Every time I found with a, with a guitar uh, that's been shipped to me across the States, I have to do it. Now it's like a different guitar. The danger if you go too much and play too hard is it will buzz. But, I mean, just don't play that hard. A 
Now these strings, they are 13s, they are going out of tune, so I'll give them a slight tug here. This is something that I'm guessing Sweetwater don't do. Some people believe in it, some people don't. But it's very important to stretch your strings in. Look at that, they've dropped already. If they'd stretched them, maybe they wouldn't have gone out of tune in shipping. Sounds like I'm, I'm finding a lot of negatives here, doesn't it? I'm really not. It's just I am quite passionate that you should know how to use this tool and also how to stretch your strings in. And that you should check the guitar over before you accept it as, as an instrument of your own. Also, it's not a bad idea to look inside with a torch, a mirror, or even your phone. I would take the strings off, carefully remove the saddle and the pins, check everything, put my phone inside carefully, don't drop it, and record a movie, move it around and watch the movie back. Make sure there's nothing broken or weird inside the guitar. Sometimes you might find some cool writing and ins inscriptions in there too. Okay, so let's see what you think. This is straight out of the box. I just gave the um, truss rod a slight turn there. That's about half a turn, I guess. And um, I, I stretched the strings and tuned them. Let's see what you think of this guitar. Look at that sustain. It's great. I find Martin guitars be very consistent. I don't really have any problems with them. All the ones I've tried. It's really finding one that looks nice. I like to find a lighter guitar myself just because I play a lot. <laughs> now what will I have to do with this guitar going forward? Or well, one thing, I will just check the intonation. If you don't know how to do that, I'll show you. Play the note here at the 12th fret. Make sure that's in tune. So that's perfect, and then play the harmonic. Perfect, perfect intonation, really great. Yeah, so what will I need to do going forward if I'm keeping this guitar? Yeah, I'm, I'm keeping this guitar. I love the weight, okay? It's, 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 it's not super light, but it's, uh, and one question you might have is, does the headstock bow over? Because is this too light compared to this? You do need to wear it and make sure the headstock isn't top heavy. But if not, then I think the lighter body is, is really cool. And I like the mahogany too, it looks nice. So what do I need to do with this guitar going forward? Well, it does not come with a strap pin. So you need to have one installed. I would never do that, I'd have someone do that for me. That would scare me to drill into this wood. But I do believe a strap pin is important. While I'm auditioning the, the guitar, I will use um, this leather, uh, it's, it's like a leather thing that just, just, just goes around the headstock here and clips which gives you a place to attach your strap and you wear it like the cowboy style, you know, or cowgirl style over, over here. That just means I can play at a gig and try that and make sure it's, it's exactly what I want. And there's obviously no electronics, but uh, I can use a sound hole pickup just to test at a gig, see how it feels to play. But the actual sound is great. It's very loud. This does ship with 13 strings, which I like. I just love that big sound it gives from the Dreadnought guitars. If it's hard to play for you, you can use 12s. I would maybe use 12s, but try and work up to 13s. I really think they make a big difference. I really think they sound so much better. And over time of playing them a lot, your fingers just get used to it and, and in the end, it kind of, if you play every day a lot, the 13s kind of just feel like 12s anyway, so it's fine. All right. 
Awesome. So that's the D18. Let me know what you think in the comments. Um, I've been a real HD28 guy before this, and I do love those guitars, but they are heavier, and they do have a slightly different sound, but I, I like the sound of this. It's got the black bridge pins here, just plastic, which is fine. Um, I love the pickguard color. And I love these Grover tuners. There's, there's no nothing rattling or anything. It's excellent. At the end of the day, all you really want from an acoustic guitar is that it stays in tune, has great intonation, plays easy, and has a great big full sound, right? At least that's what I want. The next thing, of course, is the pickup. But I have videos on that, so check them out in the pickups playlist on my channel. And if you like this video and want to see more in the future, I'm sure there'll be many more, please subscribe, like and share, and let me know what you think of this guitar. I'd be interested to know your, your thoughts on the, the D18, the mahogany versus the rosewood kind of thing. Okay, until next time, thanks for watching. Bye-bye.